Yeah, so here I am sitting over here to park. Figured I'd come down here and well do what I do. This is gonna be just a rant. Okay. You know I was watching Blue Skies Media and he's over there talking about how Monday Forever Alone and his female companion over there. And he was sincere with what he was talking about. And you can tell it and he was telling the truth to what it's really like for men. In a world where men are the most hated, and this is no lie, in a world where men are the most hated. And you know, and people who deny that are clearly living a fantasy. You know, got this little fountain over here. If I come up over here some, used to be where a riverboat was at. That building back there in the back. That you're seeing off there, you know, and so anyhow, Blue Skies Media, I understand him, for real, I totally understand him, you know, the problem is, is I, you know, people have lost care. And that is what the real problem is. And unfortunately, without care, you fall into a situation where you basically become psychopaths. And I know people don't like to be told that they might be becoming psychopaths. But the reality is, what do we got going on here? Can't see nothing to know which way I'm going with my camera here. Because the sun is just blocking out any vision I have okay but anyhow as I was saying when it comes right down to it the reality is actually pretty simple you're in a situation where you're born a guy and if you're not successful as well social engineering other human beings have decided what success was and what unsuccess was, what good looking is, what ugly is. Yeah, human beings have decided this for other human beings. And of course, through greed, they've decided materialistic items and money, you know, man-made things is what it's all based on. And the ones that have more man-made things than somebody else start looking down on others. And this mentality is across the board. When the dating scene, all oh, the Chad, the stud, the whoever you want to call him back in the day was the bad boy. The one that seems to have the women are the ones that are deemed successful by others. And then of course women are so nitpicky because of social engineering Oh, well, they're going to be the one having the kids, so therefore, they got to make sure the gene's right, you know, the gene pool, and yeah, and it's got to be this, and it's got to be that, and it's got to look this way, and it's got to be this tall, yeah, and it can only be this big in body weight, and it can be this, and it's got to be that, you know, and all oh, picky, 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 you know, Steve Hoka did a video years ago called Picky, 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 and he was not far off at all with what he was saying. But the reality is that's exactly what it is. And so the majority of men, high number of men, that's why I was telling you, you know, even when girls' rights what's cares out of the men's rights movement, you know, the feminist over there who took over and infiltrated and took over a man's movement. And she clearly said it to you. There's gonna be a significant. When you say significant, that means high number. That means a lot. And she said, there's going to be a significant number of men that will be untouchable. That no woman's going to want to give the time of day to. And that's what it comes down to. That is the reality. And 
Unfortunately, we sit back and we condone that type of behavior. We really do. And why are we sitting back condoning that kind of behavior? Has anybody ever thought of that? What are we doing? Sitting back and condoning that type of behavior and then going along with it. We're all human beings. You know, when you hear women say, well, you wouldn't be here if not for me. Well, did she realize she wouldn't be here if not for us? No, she just totally left out half the equation. That it took, it took, a, it took both genders to create that life. Okay, you know, and this is the crux of it all. We're all human beings. We all have emotions, we all have feelings, we all have wants and needs. Yep. And because of the loss of care, and because of selfishness and greed, materialistic shit, man-made stuff, everything that you call successful is all created out of man-made stuff. Who has more of what than somebody else? That's right. And then our lust, because this is what they've pushed in our face, you know, they're thriving on using people's lust. You know, and promoting and pushing sex. Which, of course, helps destroy morals and decays your society and decays relationships. Sure, people want sex. That's normal, okay? And sure, people are going to have sex. That's normal. What do you think I said the core of NWO is? Is the dating scene. Because through sex comes life. Okay, and... If they're ever going to do as they put in people's face, which is what they want, you think the Georgia Guidestones was just accidentally wrote? You think somebody spent the amount of money it would have took to have them, have them stones created, the size they are and the writing that was on it, and the three different tongues? Do you think somebody would spend that kind of money and put it for the public to see and not mean what they're saying? What do you I mean? You know, for people to think that, they're out to lunch in their head. Just they're turning their back and they're deliberately turning their back and ignoring. Ignoring don't make go away. The only thing you're doing is you're complicit. You're complicit with your own enslavement. You're complicit with allowing other human beings to dump on other human beings. All because it's not affecting you because you have no care. Okay, oh yeah, the only care you have is what? For your own self? Your immediate surroundings? That's pretty much it. But it goes right back to what I said. People who lose care, people do not have the who do not have the ability to care, represent that of the psychopath. And it essentially becomes a psychopath themselves. And the majority of our world today, not just government officials, no, not just bankers and politicians and so on, and the upper angelot, the elite. Oh yeah, they're definitely psychopath. But guess what? It's rubbing off. The majority of the nobodies are psychopaths. You know what Blue Skies Media said was absolutely true. Okay, the sad thing is, is he's falling for, well, you can call it Asian. I'm just gonna think instead of calling these people agents, I'm just gonna say part of the establishment. That's right. They're all employed by the establishment, which is the very people we're fighting against by your enemy. So, Blue Skies Media, unfortunately, because he's not awake to where the problem comes from, because he's unaware of it even when it's been put in his face, he chooses to do what everybody's doing. He's turning his head to it. Okay? So, he's, he don't need enemies. He don't need enemies at all. You know why? Because he's his own worst enemy. He don't need any enemies when you're your own enemy. And if you're going to follow your enemy and worship your enemy, seriously, you don't need enemies. You're your own enemy. I don't care what people tell me about Blue Sky Media and his girl. See, his now on the scene girl that he's been showing in his videos. No. Of course, of course she's there. That's part of the PSYOP. That's part of the mind game. That's part of mental manipulation. It's what they do best. How would evil not be evil if it didn't play along? Okay? 
And it's so in your face, it's, it's disgusting. Come on, tell me what female, even when I give somebody a chance, and I've given a couple females a chance over the years, okay? And every time you do, it's always the same thing. Excuse me, they're there with an agenda. That's right. You know, how many women get mad when they hear me speak out about what's really going on and how unfair it is for men? And nobody cares. Nobody cares to say, well, the world's not fair, or life's not fair. You gotta get used to it and man up. Okay? No. No, I don't gotta get used to it and man up. I'll tell you why I don't gotta get used to it and man up. Because we're all human beings. What you've done is you've placed yourself in a spot you're not. It's no different than somebody gets up and they're making videos on YouTube and they get a viral video. You know, I've had four or five viral videos. And my two biggest viral ones were uh, back in the day when that customer or the people standing outside of Walmart waiting for Black Friday from the open the doors. And they opened the doors and the guy that opened the doors got stampled to death by the people coming in. Okay, I've done a video on that right after it took place, and that video went super viral. I'll call it super viral, the amount of hits it had. At that time, Google didn't own YouTube, and I got a flag on my channel. Okay, I got a flag on my channel, and I had all these err because I had big hits and stuff running my channel. So what, right? And then my next biggest one was the Boston bombing. That one also took off just like that one did. Meantime, I've had like three or four other ones, you know, over the years this went viral, but, you know, they went viral, but they never went as far viral as them two did. But it didn't really matter to me because it was never about the numbers. Even back in the day when, before Google got their hands on it, when I was hitting 10,000 videos plus, or 10,000 views plus per every single day for every single video I uploaded, and at the end of the week it had two, three hundred thousand views on it, every video okay that didn't bother me any I mean you know I wasn't I didn't let my head swell up people say everybody's got an ego well you know the, the, the fault with everybody having an ego is ego absolutely corrupts the human mind and when you want to assume everybody has an ego and everybody runs on ego I disagree that's an assumption being made by everybody around and everybody pointing a finger at everybody else because it justifies them having their ego if you can point your finger at somebody else for having an ego, you can justify your own ego. And all the ego does is the same thing as money, power, and greed does. It absolutely corrupts the fucking your behaviors. Then you start doing anything to cover up your ego, including being corrupt and shitting down other people's throats, including looking down on people just like the rich did all over man, materialistic and man-created things once again. So see how the see how that goes? They go hand in hand. You know, and I refuse to see that stuff. It's even like years ago when Sarah and Karina says to me, Bill, how does it feel to be famous? And I says, I'm not famous. No, oh, yes, you are. And they argued with me. You're literally all over the internet, everywhere, everybody. Are. And I was like, so freaking what? This was never about that. This has always been about what's right for all of us. Okay. And when I speak up against females, I speak up against the corruption. I don't speak up against every female. I speak up against the ones that are doing the behaviors I talk about. But when I do that, I'm a misogynist. I'm a woman hater. And how dare me, how dare me expose this stuff. But yet if I expose all the wrongs of men, everybody's applauding me. Go along with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, all the men. Oh, yeah, that's cool, man. You, you expose the men. Don't you expose a woman, though. Oh no, you cover her ass up. And what'd you do there? You just created a psychopathic woman. You kept placing her on a pedestal, you kept making, not making her responsible for her own actions. And the list just goes on and on. This has been going on and on and on and on for decades now. Forever, okay? And the sad thing about it is, see, this is where we're at now. See, this is why Blue Skies Media, his words were so correct. That's right. And everything he said against the PSYOP, the brain screw, the, the mind game being played by Monday and his partner in crime right over there who are part of the establishment, that's right, 
who are literally part of the establish establishment and making money for doing what they're doing. That's why they're doing it. They're doing it for the tool. And the reason they're doing it is because they're told to do it and they're given their scripts. They know what they're supposed to do. And what they're supposed to do is keep the problem alive. That's what they're paid to do. Come up here and give you guys false hope and lead you down the road to blaming yourself. At all costs, make sure you believe it is your own fault. And look, because he knows it's his own fault. He's got a girlfriend now. No, he don't got a girlfriend. He's got somebody that's making money and at the end of their fucking duty, they walk away and go their own ways. They're not with each other. And you know what, he can, that could fall, you know, that could actually be his wife. He would never tell you. He'd be up here still lying to you, man. He'd still be up here doing what he's doing. It's what he's being paid to do. I mean, do you know him in real life? You've been to his house? Have you hung with him? Do you go over to the house anytime you want? He calls you up and you go hang out with your buds? No. So how can you sit there and tell me you know him? I can tell you this, he's part of the establishment. I wasn't born yesterday, I go with my gut. I go with what I see and from life experience. The guy's paid shield, he's part of the establishment. And that's what makes it sad listening to Blue Skies Media tell so much hardcore truth and not even know who his enemy is. And so he worships and idolizes his enemy and he's always gonna stay right where he's at because of that. And he'll be blaming himself just like he's supposed to. You wouldn't want to blame your real enemy now, would you? You wouldn't want to look at the real reason this is going on. You wouldn't want to look at our loss of care. You wouldn't want to look at our behaviors. You wouldn't want to call a spade a spade, a wrench a wrench. That's right. You just want to turn around and call something else. It's disgusting. It's sickening behavior. Yeah, I took a different approach and a different view today. As you can see, you're looking at pine trees or whatever. I just got the camera pointing and talking. I told you it's just a rant. Okay? And as you can tell, I'm not, I'm not home. I'm here where I can have peace and quiet. So, you know, and the sad thing is, and I've said this on the TFL uh, on my live streams, and I've said this in video, and I've said this over and over to people. You don't know what you're getting into when you can't get a woman in your life in today's society. Because the reality is, is not all, but the majority of, and I'm not gonna say all women, okay, but I am gonna say the majority of, you'll clearly see that they're corrupt. They're up and on a pedestal. They don't even know they're corrupt. They don't, they don't, even, they don't even realize, the, the majority of women I'd say don't even realize how bad men really have it for trying to get a woman in their life. You know, I would say the majority. I would say there's a lot of, you know, and it's not like it's 100% across the board because I'll tell you what, I've seen lots of couples, lots of couples, okay, where the guy's big, obese, and he's not so good looking, and he has a woman in his life. I've seen this lots of times, okay? So, you know, it's not 100% across the board. There's women out here that don't fall into the programming. No, they don't fall for the programming at all. And they're independent of all the other women. And they'll get smashed down by the corrupt women. Oh yeah, they will. And most of them ain't even awake to what's going on, so they're not speaking out. And then if they become awake to what's going on and start speaking out, they get attacked by all these women, they say, fuck that crap, and they walk away. That's right. And then of course with men attacking men, or put, or will Paul ought to put another gender up on a pedestal, you're just impetuating the problem. That's all you're doing. And when you deny the problem, you're also, you're also helping the problem to grow. You know, it's like back in the day when Jerry told me because I gave TFL a name, I caused TFL to grow. Biggest crock of shit you ever heard in your life. Because I gave a name to a existing a problem that was going on in society that allowed people to identify what was happening to them, okay? I'm suddenly, uh, the reason it grew? No. Oh, I'm responsible for making it grow. No. Well, if that's the case, let's just think about this. 
let's just go with his very own philosophy, okay? That I caused it to grow. Well, you know, Jerry's got a high ego. Jerry believes in ego, okay? And as long as somebody else believes in ego, it allows him to be able to cover up his own behaviors. Okay, that's really what it comes down to. So then he can be corrupt. So I suppose Jerry believing in ego allowed ego to grow and now everybody has one, huh? <laughs> Do you see the crock of shit we got going on here? Nom TFL was born and alive long before I come along and gave it a name. It was created by the government, the New World Order, and social engineering. That's right. And then women, well, because of social engineering, they helped create TFL. What do you think, uh, Karen says, Karen told you right in your face. And people keep ignoring that. And this is why when I said what Blue Skies Media was talking about, he was 100% correct. It goes right back down to that very same thing. There will be a significant number of men that will never have anybody in their life that will not be touchable, are deemed a human by a female. That's really what she said. If you want to get right down to the crux of it, what Karen Stroud really said was there will be a significant, and remember that means a high number. Significant stands for a high number. So there will be a high number of men that are not human beings. They don't have wants and needs. They don't need companionship or partnership of any kind. They got themselves. That's what she really said. And we women don't give a shit. If you have nobody in your entire life and you die alone. This is what Karen really said. And that is to a high number of men. This is what Karen really said in your face. She said, look, I don't care if 90% of the men never have nobody in our life. There's nothing wrong with that. Although us women, we'll always have somebody in our life. Because see, once again, it goes back to men don't have feelings and emotions, wants, or needs. Men are not human beings. Men are disposable. We're just utilities to be used. That's really what Karen said. Now I know you say, no, I'm adding words to her mouth. No, I'm giving you the definition of what she said. Because when she clearly said there's going to be a significant number, which is a high number of men, that are never, no woman will ever want to put their hat be with. That are deemed not fuckable. Yeah. That are deemed not dateable. That they will not be seen with or don't want to be with. Yes, the significant number. What's that going to be based on? Oh, that's right. It's going to be based on everything that's but socially engineered and man-made things. That's right. This considered success. So see how evil of a statement that really is? When you really break down what she said, it comes down to everything I just told you. And she said it to you right in your face and none of you are blinking an eye to freaking stand up to her and say, what kind of men's right movement leader are you? Look what you just done. You basically slaughtered millions and millions of men, destroyed them, gave them no life. Nothing to work for or to want to live for. Why would these men want to anticipate in your society and break their butts so you can have a better life when this is how you feel about them? When you women are, when women are willing to go to them extremes, and when I say you women, I'm talking about the women that know full well they're doing this. It doesn't matter if you're in denial and you know, if you know, you know, it comes right down to the fucking reality. You do not have the amount of numbers of men all with the same complaints to not have it be real. And you simp, simps, a normies, so-called normies and simps, you're psychopaths. You don't have care. And anybody that loses care and don't have care and it's all about themselves, inevitably becomes a psychopath like the people at the top. And if you don't like me telling you you're all a bunch of damn psychopaths, well, I don't care. It's the truth. You know, and as far as not having a woman in your life in today's society, as corrupt as women are, I don't blame you. You know, I'm on the wit's end. I told Heather just yesterday, I told her, it's over, you know. She needs to look for another place to live. 
Okay, and I'm not, I'm not lying to you. I told her this, okay? I literally told her and she needs to look for another place to live. And I'm not joking about it, okay? I'm not joking at all. See, this is what I've been trying to tell guys for so long now. And I tell women the same thing. We don't know how to treat each other. We really don't. You know, and the reason I tell Heather this is because she don't know how to treat anybody. I, I'm, you know, I'm treated lower than a piece of dirt on the ground on a regular basis by her. She's gone through some serious real, she's done some real fucked up shit recently that anybody get rid of her for. And you know, and I'm tired of it. I'm not gonna, you know, I got bad health, I'm not gonna be around much longer. And I don't need the added stress of somebody who's thinking they can just dump down my throat anytime they want, every day of the week. That you don't got to do a goddamn thing to, excuse my language. You don't got to do nothing to them. For them to make your life hell. I'll give you an example. So I get up out of bed. I go up and use the bathroom and I come down. My brother's sitting there at the computer. And as I'm walking by, I go say so I had something to tell him. And... I looked down and he's taking a nitro. So I realized, okay. So I says to him, having chest pain are you? Okay, and he says, yes. And I says, yeah, I see that, you're taking a nitro. And he says, yep. I says, okay, so we're talking. And I proceeded to tell him to take, see, I've got two vehicles. I got my truck that I've had for a long time now. And then I got this car. But I've added my brother's name to this car, and I got this car here just right around two years ago. That's just short of two years ago. It's almost totally paid off. Ain't got much left on it. But just the same, I pretty much made all the payments. But for his name being on it, for when I pass away, his car's his, as well as mine. I told him, I'll make the payments, but uh, you're going to help with the repairs. When it needs repairs, you'll do the repair. Unless it's too expensive, then we'll both go in on it. Other than that, you'll do the repairs on it, and I'll make the payments. He said, okay, that's been the agreement. In return for him having the car, when I pass away, it'll buy, if I pay for it. So I've been paying for the car. The car's almost paid off now. Well, so I got two vehicles. Heather don't have a license and don't have a vehicle, okay? And so she's not, she don't got a driver's license to begin with. She don't have a vehicle. Truck was mine long before I met her. Okay, the car was got by me, not her. She don't got one penny into it. And I was telling my brother to go ahead and take the truck to work, to go to work that day. And I says, but maybe you're not going to make it because it seems like you're having problems. He says, yeah. And about that time, Heather's sitting over on the couch and she just says, she says, well, Brian, and she brings up her roommate, he has to go to work at blah, 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 and he's going to be using the car. And I said, no, he's not. He'll be using the truck. And she started running around and I says, no, I'll drop him off at work. If he has to go to work and my brother's at work, if my brother's not at work, then he'll be using the truck. Otherwise, my brother's gonna take my truck to work and I'll take and drop Brian off. That's what I said to her. And she's, oh, really? And she started making trouble. Immediately, there was a big problem with she couldn't tell Brian what vehicle he was driving that day without consulting the owner. <laughs> uh, so then she got mad at me, and that just was just the very beginning of the tip of the ice. So she spent the rest of the day making hell for me, and then I was talking with Brian, and then yeah, and it turns out she's making all this drama, and then she's running right to them and trying to get them to side with her. So, you know, okay, so let's see, hold on. They're gonna side with you about your ability to borrow out my vehicles to somebody without asking me or consulting me and not care about if my brother had the truck. And I was automatically gonna just give my car off to Brian. And if I told her if Brian, my brother didn't work, he was still taking the car because she was deciding who took what vehicle, okay, when she had no right deciding that. But just the point, I mean, I'm just showing the little things, how she just simply takes something as simple as me talking to my brother, stuff that's really none of her business, and making the arrangements for what they're gonna do that day with the vehicles that absolutely belong to me. And she's got her nose parked in the middle of it. 
Uh, she does this with everything in the whole house on a regular basis. She parks her nose in the middle of stuff and starts dictating and telling everybody what they're doing and does it with a bad attitude. She pisses everybody off. She's had everybody in the house pissed off at her from doing this and this has been going on and on and on and on. And of course, I'm the center of the attention to be shit on on a regular basis. I'm the one to be shit on. I'm the one to be shit on. She starts drama. And this is how sick it gets, okay? You know, and I'll give you one more prime example of just the last week. You know, I've been buying the food. We've been putting the food in the house and feeding them. Now, Brian just got a job. They got time to get on their feet, no problem. And so we've been feeding the both of them. Now, the female, she, I'm not gonna start giving names, but the female, she's got some food stamps. So she goes and buys a meal after we've already fed them umpteen times. She buys one meal, okay, cool, you're helping out with what little bit you can, I just say nothing about it. Then the next day, Heather is telling me I have to pay her back for the food that she bought. Okay, that I owe her, I owe her that money. So then I says, well, I'll tell you what, I'll pay her back for that as soon as she pays me back for the three times we've taken her out to eat and the meals that we bought since in the last two or three weeks. As soon as she uh, pays back for the, all the meals that we've been feeding her and the times we actually took her out to eat, as soon as she pays that money back, then we'll go ahead and pay her back the money for the one meal that she bought. Now, do you see how insane this is? And Heather flipped out and made it into a big deal. And then the next day, I get up and she's downstairs and Heather gets up and Heather says something to her and immediately she starts in. And now she's got this female convinced that she's right and so the other, now both females are against me because somehow I magically owe her money. So I just informed them both, there's the front door and this is where you can both go. Okay, this is where you can both go. And then I told her, and then she says, well, you made me come down here. And I says, there ain't nobody made you go nowhere. How the hell do you ever get that I made you go anywhere? Nobody made you do nothing. You said you wanted to do this, you done this, now I made you? Oh my God, give me a break. Okay, see, so here's your manipulation. Okay, that I took her out of state against her will. Hold on, this has been planned for like eight months. The entire time, I can't wait to get there, I can't wait to get there, blah, blah, blah. She comes from Buffalo to Howard Lake and climbs in a vehicle and goes with us, all willingly on her own. And now I've made her. I've kidnapped her. <laughs> uh, oh, no, 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 no. There's the front door, and you can go on down the damn road, okay? I don't care. Get on down the road, man. You can get back home with your mommy. I don't care. But you're not here. It's as simple as that. See? Then, of course, when Brian got window, that's what she said. Brian had a few words with her, and suddenly she changed her mind. Huh, I wonder why that would be. But do you follow what I'm saying? And you're in a hurry to get into a relationship, guys, really? Really? You're in a hurry to be treated like dirt? Come on, guys, are you in a big hurry to be treated like dirt? You need to follow along here because I could give you 100,000 more examples. So the reality is, is nobody knows. Nobody knows how to treat each other. I'm not going to blame men and I'm not going to blame women when it comes to how we're treating one another. But I will blame women on the fact that they've gone along with social engineering so bad and are so blindsided and so dumb because here you have a female that's willingly running a man's movement telling men there's going to be a significant number, which is a high number, of men that will die alone and never have no way in our life because us females have decided that you're not a human being and you should die. And then, you know, and Hoka's own words, Women love women, men love women, and women hate men, and men hate men. And that is the reality in your face in our day-to-day -day society. That is not a lie, that's fact. And why is that going on? Because of the loss of care. So what am I witnessing? Millions and millions of psychopaths. While you're a psychopath complaining about the powers to be, you're no better than the powers to be. Look what you're doing to each other. Look at what you're allowing women to do. Look at what women are so willing to do. So willing to literally 
say there's nothing wrong with this, okay? Well, then I guess women, we should go ahead and neuter every guy as they're born. Since you hate men, they should all be neutered. Every last one worldwide for the next 50 years. That's right. What do you mean you want our baby? No, I'm sorry. You hate them. So we're neutering them. We're going to take care of the problem, okay? We'll take care of the. No, no, we're not going to play select out what babies, boys that you might want to keep around. Nope, sorry. Nope, don't work that way. Okay, no, 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 don't work that way at all. You want to do away with men, you want a world without men, then let's give you what you want. Okay? So from now on, every boy's fixed. Don't matter. If it's born a boy, we're going to neuter it. That's right. You'll never be able to get a baby from it. Nope. That's how we're going to do that. That's how we'll handle that. I think that's a fair statement. After all, there's going to be a significant number of women that will never be able to have a baby once we do this. Isn't that awesome, Karen? I think that's a pretty good statement to go along with Karen Stroud's statement. It fits in perfect. And for all the you women who want to sit there and holler at your kid, well, see, there you go, by golly. It works out for you, too. Maybe then you'll start remembering it took two, took two genders to make a baby, to create a life. But sometimes you just got to do things the hard way to wake people up, to get them to reach down there behind them and grab themselves by the back of their head, by their hair, and pull their head firmly back out of there, you know what. Anyhow, guys, I just wanted to come up here and have a little rant about what I'm seeing, talk a little bit about Blue Skies Media, as I did. And I clearly see where the guy's coming from. He's definitely TFL. It's just sad he's so asleep to who his real enemy is and what's really going on. And he's sitting there idling, idolizing his very demise. <laughs> because he's nothing but part of the system. That's all he is. That's all he, well, it's all Monday, forever alone Monday, and his new girl, Annika, or whatever you want to call her. That's all they are. They're employees of the establishment. And that is the majority of YouTube, is the establishment. And then there's the flunkies like me and a bunch of others, whether you're speaking out on dating or NWO or what's going on in the world, that are not part of the establishment. But the majority of YouTube has been infiltrated and taken over by the military industrial media complex and the CIA, and most of them are all employees of the establishment. Even Monday, an employee of the establishment, He's not on Blue Sky's media side. He's playing a mind game. He's playing a mind game on all of you. You know, and I'm not going to back off because I see right through him. But anyhow, with that being said, guys, I'm going to get on out of here. But I will be back up here on Saturday at 9 o'clock with the third episode of, uh, that's right, TFL, Saturday Night Live. So if you're on on Saturday... Join me on TFL Saturday Night Live, and until then, you all have a good one.